when they were supporting Concerned Veterans of America in 2015, I joined their team and I went to Washington, D.C. for Vets on the Hill and just started the organization from there on in. So that song really inspired me. And Dave Bray is such a patriot. I'm hoping he's going to come play at one of the Rock and Brews restaurants. Uh, there will be four here by next year in the Central Florida area. And because Gene and Paul Stanley own it, I think he's going to come out. But we got a lot of requests from the audience. Don't you agree? Yeah, Dave Bray is a USA patriotic rock star. Dave Bray, USA. Look him up. Good evening, America. You are listening to the Remember the Fallen show with Sergeant Dave. Here we are live at the Remember the Fallen YouTube studio in beautiful Seminole County, USA on the Winter Springs Oviedo line. You see, one of us can be disregarded, two of us can be ran off, but a podcast show, we are a movement. Now, you know we are all proud to be Americans that live in a free society, but how did we get here? How did we survive the Stalin? How did we survive Mussolini? How did we survive Hitler? And how did we survive today's brutal enemy ISIS? Well, you and I know very well it's our military. It was the United States Armed Forces and their code of honor, our code of honor, that forges our stability as a foreign nation in the past and will continue in the future for many generations to come. From my experience of all the Army values, honor is one that embodies all the others. But loyalty encompasses our duties to be fervent as we bear true faith and allegiance to the United States Constitution, our soldiers, and especially our families. As a young veteran of only five years, I would like to share with you the Veterans Creed. I am a veteran. I am a warrior and member of a team spanning the world. I have served my country proudly and now stand by to serve my brothers and sisters in arms. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen brother or sister. If they are hurt, I will carry them. I will help them face their enemies to include the demons within. They are my brothers and they are my sisters. I am a veteran. As many as you are out there, are too. So if we as veterans to truly believe in this creed, we should have already helped a veteran in need by now. With this modified code of honor, this Veterans Day, are we putting everyone to the test, civilian or veteran, of helping one veteran in need by 365 days, a full year? You have to check this box off and we shall call it 1365. Help one veteran in a year's time initiative. All right, tell you more about this initiative as we go on break. Take care of our sponsors. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. 30% of Americans who are planning home improvements of $5,000 or more will pay for those renovations with a high interest credit card. That may not be a great idea. A better idea may be to take cash out of your home with a Quicken Loans 30 year fixed rate mortgage. The rate today on our 30 year fixed rate mortgage is 4.125%.
primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800 Quicken or go to rocketmortgage.com for getting our award information. Sesame style chicken mix with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my subway. Make it what you want. Limit time only participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. Now laugh like this. rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
Acting DHS Secretary Kevin McAleenan weighs in on Fox and Friends. This is a demographic that was certain that if they brought a child, they could be released in the United States. We have changed that dynamic. Uh, working with Mexico not only to reduce the flow, but with the microprotection protocols, we now have families waiting in Mexico. Additionally, we've partnered with El Salvador, with Guatemala, and now Honduras on streamlined repatriation. So if people don't have a valid asylum claim, they don't even make a claim, we can repatriate them swiftly directly from the border. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy Key. All right, we're back from our break. We're in the Never Forgotten Memorial YouTube studio in beautiful Seminole County, USA, on the Winter Springs Oviedo Line. And this past Sunday, third Sunday in September, every third Sunday of September, I was honored to represent my uh, commander, my post commander at the District 18 Gold Star Parents Dinner. And this was held at the beautiful post, VFW Post 2093, in Orlando, it's on 4444 Edgewater Drive, Orlando, Florida. Come out and see this great post. It's on beautiful Lake Fairview. Come on inside for a visit. You don't need uh, to have a membership just to come in and walk around. Beautiful back property overlooking the lake. Beautiful patios. Come on and check it out. But I was very honored to be part of their Gold Star Parents Dinner. And their theme was Peace, Love, and Hope. I basically want to go over uh, the proclamation that our President Trump just put forth. And so, well, here it is. Every life lost in service to our country is precious and re- irreplaceable. Our deepest sympathy, utmost respect, unwavering support, and profound gratitude go to the families who must endure the ongoing pain of such loss. On Gold Star Mothers and Families Day, we solemnly honor these families and pray for their continued strength and courage. Since the founding of our republic, our liberty has been defended by our men and women in uniform. Their love and country and devotion to duty represent the very best of America. Our nation's military families share in the demands and pressure of this noble calling. The cost is exceedingly high, with multiple deployments, relocations, and separations. But the sobering price of their sacrifice is most clearly seen in the families who have faced the life-altering loss of a father, mother, son, daughter, sister, or brother who died fighting for our freedom. Because of tragedies that forever change the course of their lives, these families receive the designation of the Gold Star. Each story is unique. Each death is profoundly personal. The fallen leave behind families who must learn to carve out a new future while coping with their loved one's absence on holidays, at celebrations, and during everyday activities. Their pain permeates every facet of life, never fully fading. Yet, in spite of their challenges and heartbreak, Gold Star families exemplify amazing grace and resilience. From the depths of grief, they emerge to find hope, purpose, and joy, serving as an example and a source of inspiration for others. These patriots know the true cost of freedom, and it is the responsibility of all Americans to stand alongside them and share in their shouldering this profound burden. The Congress, by Senate Joint Resolution 115 of June 23, 1936, has designated the last Sunday in September as Gold Star Mother's Day. Now, therefore, I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim Sunday, September 29th, 2019 as Gold Star Mothers and Families Day. I call upon all government officials to display the flag of the United States over the government buildings on this special day. I also encourage the American people to display the flag and hold appropriate ceremonies as a public expression of our nation's gratitude and respect for our Gold Star Mothers and Families. It witness whereof 
I have hereunto set my hand this 27th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2019, and of the independence of the United States of America of 244th, Donald J. Trump. And here's an also, they had a poem I'd like to read to you right now. A mother's tear were shed today for a battle long ago. Her precious gift to a warrior son whose fate she'll never know. Not heroes, shiny medals for courage through their fears. No ribbon badge of honor can match a mother's tears. A mother's tears are courage. A mother's tears are hope. For the babe once at her bosom led away in a captive's rope. Her badge of honor, mother's tears, more precious than the gold, and all shiny medals of warriors brave and bold. A mother's tears forever, undimmed by grief and years, never tarnish, never fade, God's diamonds, a mother's tears. At the Gold Star Parents Dinner, there's two families that stand out for me, personally, and, uh, Condi Jr., he was a brave soldier. The Condi family is up in the front, with the, also with the Miller family, staff size Robert James Miller. So I was uh, honored to do a memorial, never forgot memorial, for the Condi Jr. family. And it's at the bunker at the Vietnam War Veterans Museum, right over there by the UCF. And you can go ahead and see that memorial. And I got a chance to uh, share my condolences with the Condi family. But it's the Miller family that stands out for me as well because I honor Staff Sergeant Robert James Miller for wreaths across America every year since 2015. And I also worked with the Gold Star mother, Maureen Miller, at the USO. So I was very fortunate to give her a hug and tell her we're looking forward to this year's uh, wreaths across America at All Faiths Memorial Park on December 14th, uh, Saturday, um, I think it's the second Saturday or third Saturday of the month this year. And I just want to share with you um, what transpired at the White House. President Obama awards Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller, U.S. Army, the Medal of Honor for conspicuous gallantry. Staff Sergeant Miller receives the award posthumously for his heroic actions in Afghanistan in January 2008, October 6, 2010 which is only three more days from now. So I want to honor Staff Sergeant Robert James Miller with audio of his award on at the White House. Please join me in prayer. Almighty and loving God in whom we place our trust, we ask your blessings on this sacred hour as we honor the life and service of Staff Sergeant Robert James Miller, whose heroic actions in Afghanistan on January the 25th, 2008, epitomize the gallant spirit of the men and women of our armed services. Your holy scripture reminds us that those of noble character possess the relentless determination to prefer the needs of others more than their own, even to the point of laying down their life for their friends. And so we gather here today to bear witness that Rob pursued and attained a level of valor tempered with humility that few achieve here on our brief time on earth. Thank you, Lord, for charting Rob's journey to greatness his days as a young boy who dreamed of wearing our nation's cloth, to his calling as a non-commissioned officer and a member of the Special Forces, dedicating every waking moment to becoming one of our Army's quiet professionals, committed to liberating the oppressed. And in the spirit of those sacred oaths and from the depth of his character, you used Rob to raise to greatness in the chaos of combat, fighting with intrepid courage through the sandstorms of enemy fire to protect, shield, and save his brothers in arms. Lord, comfort Rob's parents, Phil and Maureen, his brothers and sisters, his fellow Green Berets who fought beside him in Afghanistan. Give us all the assurance that Rob's sacrificial actions were rewarded by your loving welcome to this happy and noble warrior and to the peaceful fields of eternity. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Good afternoon. And on behalf of Michelle and myself, welcome to the White House. Thank you, General Carver, for that beautiful invocation. We are a nation of more than 300 million Americans. Of these, less than 1% want 
wears the uniform of our armed services. And of these, just a small fraction has earned the badges of our special operations forces. In the finest military the world has ever known, these warriors are the best of the best. In an era that prizes celebrity and status, they are quiet professionals, never seeking the spotlight. In a time of war, they have borne a burden far beyond their small numbers. Training the foreign militaries to stand on their own, bringing schools and medicine to remote villages, and taking terrorists and insurgents who fought against us. Few Americans ever see their service, but all Americans are safer because of it, and our hearts swell with pride just hearing their names, including the legendary Green Berets. Today, it is my privilege to present our nation's highest military decoration. Medal of Honor to one of these remarkable soldiers, Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller. To do so, we are joined by Vice President Biden and from the Millers family's home state of Florida, a leader who helped make this day possible, Congresswoman Suzanne Cosmos. We are joined by leaders from across my administration, including Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, and leaders from our armed forces, including Army Secretary John McHugh and Chief of Staff General George Casey, as well as Commander of Special Operations Command Admiral Eric Olson. We are honored to be joined by Rob's fellow soldiers in whose ranks he served, his teammates from Alpha Company, 3rd Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group from Fort Bragg those who now welcome it into their ranks, members of the Medal of Honor Society. Most of all, we welcome more than 100 of Rob's friends and family, especially his father Phil, his mother Maureen, and his many brothers and sisters. It has been said that courage is not simply one of the virtues but the form of every virtue at the testing point. For Rob Miller, the testing point came nearly three years ago, deep in a snowy Afghan valley. But the courage he displayed that day reflects every virtue that defined his life. Rob was wise beyond his years. Growing up in Wheaton, Illinois, outside of Chicago, he was the boy in school who penned a poem about American GIs in World War II. Men, like the soldier Rob would become himself, who he said fought day and night, fighting for what they thought was right. Rob was born to leap, a high school gymnast who trained so hard his coach had to kick him out at night so they could close the gym. He was the Army recruit who pushed himself to his limits, both physically and mentally, to earn the title Green Beret. He was the Special Forces soldier who, on his first tour in Afghanistan, earned two Army Commendation Medals for his valor. Devotion to duty, an abiding sense of honor, a profound love of country. These were the virtues that found their ultimate expression when Rob just 24 years old and on his second tour, met his testing point on January 25th, 2008. Rob and his team were in the remote northwest of Afghanistan. Their mission, clear a valley of insurgents who had been attacking Afghan forces and terrorizing villagers. So when they came across an insurgent compound, Rob and his men made their move unleashing their fire and calling in airstrikes. Now, they were on foot, heading over to that destroyed compound to assess the damage and gather intelligence. It was still dark, just before dawn. It was freezing cold and silent, 
except for the crackle of the radios and the crunch of snow under their boots. Like so many times before, Rob was up front, leading a patrol of two dozen Afghans and Americans on a narrow trail along the valley floor, with the steep mountains towering over them. First, it was just a single insurgent jumping out from behind a boulder. Then the whole valley seemed to explode with gunfire. Within seconds, Rob and his patrol were pinned down with almost no cover. Bullets and rocket-propelled grenades raining down from every direction. And when enemy reinforcements poured in, the odds were overwhelming. Rob's small patrol of two dozen men was nearly surrounded by almost 150 insurgents. With the enemy just feet away, some so close he could see their faces, Rob held his ground. Despite the chaos around him, he radioed back enemy positions. As the only Pashtun speaker on his team, he organized the Afghan soldiers around him. But the incoming fire, in the words of one soldier, was simply astounding. Rob made a decision. He called for his team to fall back. And then he did something extraordinary. Rob moved in the other direction toward the enemy, drawing their guns away from his team and bringing the fire of all those insurgents down upon himself. The fighting was ferocious. Rob seemed to disappear into clouds of dust and debris, but his team could hear him on the radio, still calling out the enemy's position. They could hear his weapon, still firing as he provided cover for his men. Then, over the radio, they heard his voice. He had been hit. But still, he kept calling out enemy positions. Still, he kept firing. Still, he kept throwing his grenades. And then they heard it. Rob's weapon fell silent. This is the story of what one American soldier did for his team, but it's also a story of what they did for him. Two of his teammates braved the bullets and rushed to Rob's aid. In those final moments, they were there at his side, American soldiers there for each other. The relentless fire forced them back, but they refused to leave their fallen comrade. When reinforcements arrived, these Americans went in again, risking their lives, taking more casualties, determined to bring Rob Miller out of that battle. And finally, after fighting the rage for hours, they did. When the dust settled and the smoke cleared, there was no doubt Rob Miller and his team had struck a major blow against the local insurgents. Five members of his patrol had been wounded, but his team had survived. One of his teammates surely spoke for all of them when he said of Rob, I would not be alive today if not for his ultimate sacrifice. This is the valor that America honors today. Rob's family and friends, I know that no words can ease the ache in your hearts. But I also know this, Rob's life and legacy endures. Rob endures in the pride of his parents. Phil and Maureen, you raised a remarkable son. Today and in the years to come, may you find some comfort in knowing that Rob gave his life doing what he loved, protecting friends and defending his comfort. You gave your oldest son to America, and America is forever your death. Rob endures in the love of his brothers and sisters, all seven of whom join us today. Your brothers laid down his life so you could live yours in security and freedom. You honor him by living your lives to the fullest, and I suspect Rob would be especially proud of his younger brother, Tom, who, inspired by his big brother, is now trained to be a green parade himself. Robert Doors and the Afghans that he trained and he befriended. In valleys and villages half a world away, they remembered the American who spoke their language, who respected their culture, and who helped them defend their country. They welcomed him into their homes and invited him to their weddings. And in a sign of their lasting gratitude, they presented Rob's parents with a beautiful Afghan flight. 
and, and Dan Rudd, uh, which hangs today in the Miller Home, a symbol of the partnership between the people of America and Afghanistan. Rob Miller endures in the service of his teammates, his brothers in arms who served with him, fled with him, and fought to bring him home. These soldiers embody the spirit that guides our troops in Afghanistan every day. The courage, the resolve, the relentless focus on their mission, the great momentum of the Taliban insurgency, to build the capacity of Afghans to defend themselves, and to make sure that Afghanistan is never again a safe haven for terrorists who would attack our country. That is their mission, that is our mission, and that is what we will do. And I would ask Rob's team, who uh, were with him that day, to please stand and be recognized. Right Finally, Rob Miller and all those who give their lives in our name endure each other. Every American is safer because of their service, and every American has a duty to remember and honor their sacrifice. If we do, if we keep their legacy alive, if we keep faith with the freedoms they died to defend, then we can imagine a day Decades from now, when another child sits down at his desk, ponders the true meaning of heroism, and finds inspiration in the story of a soldier, Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller, and a generation that fought day and night, fighting for what they thought was right. That is the meaning of this medal, and that is our summons today as a proud and grateful nation. So please join me in welcoming Phil and Maureen Miller for the reading of the citation. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded, in the name of the Congress, the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of life above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller distinguished himself by extraordinary acts of heroism while serving as the weapons sergeant in Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha 3312, Special Operations Task Force 33, Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force Afghanistan, during combat operations against an armed enemy in Kunar Province, Afghanistan, on January 25, 2008. While conducting a combat reconnaissance patrol through the Gawardesh Valley, Staff Sergeant Miller and his small element of U.S. and Afghan National Army soldiers engaged a force of 15 to 20 insurgents occupying prepared fighting positions. Staff Sergeant Miller initiated the assault by engaging the enemy positions with his vehicle's turret-mounted Mark 19 40mm automatic grenade launcher, while simultaneously providing detailed descriptions of the enemy positions to his command, enabling effective, accurate close air support. Following the engagement, Staff Sergeant Miller led a small squad forward to conduct the battle damage assessment. As the group neared the, the small, steep, narrow valley that the enemy had inhabited, a large, well-coordinated insurgent force initiated a near ambush, assaulting from elevated positions with ample cover. Exposed and with little available cover, the patrol was totally vulnerable to enemy rocket propelled grenades and automatic weapons fire. As a point man, Staff Sergeant Miller was at the front of the patrol, cut off from supporting elements and less than 20 meters from enemy forces. Nonetheless, with total disregard for his own safety, he called for his men to quickly move back to cover positions as he charged the enemy over exposed ground and under overwhelming enemy fire in order to provide protective fire for his team. While maneuvering to engage the enemy, Staff Sergeant Miller was shot in the upper torso. Ignoring the wound, he continued to push the fight moving to draw fire from over 100 enemy fighters upon himself. He then again charged forward through an open area in order to allow his teammates to safely reach cover. After killing at least 10 insurgents, wounding dozens more, and repeatedly exposing himself to withering enemy fire while moving from position to position, 
Staff Sergeant Miller was mortally wounded by enemy fire. His extraordinary valor ultimately saved the lives of seven members of his own team and 15 Afghan National Army soldiers. Staff Sergeant Miller's heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty and at the cost of his own life are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Army. All right, it's getting zero doc 30 for the show, and I'm just about ready to go into rack ops mode. But before I relax, never. One last promo. So go to Sergeant Dave Matthews at gmail.com. That's SGT Dave Matthews with two T's at gmail.com for suggestions for the show's content. Or if you know a good piece of gear, a veteran advocate, I will get him on the show. So copy, email me again at SergeantDaveMatthews at gmail.com. And you can always go to my Facebook page and like the page at all one word, Remember the Fallen. And or you can go to my website, www.NeverForgottenMemorials.org. And don't forget, mark your calendar every Thursday night at 9 o'clock. And you will hear our show, Remember the Fallen. Until all the troops come home. All right? God bless America.